Well, first of all, you know, we're really pleased for the University of Alabama in terms of the way our players um, played today, the way they competed today. Uh, I think it was a first-class performance from start to finish. Uh, we asked the players to focus on taking advantage of their talent today and have enough poise to do it for 60 minutes in the game, regardless of what they had to overcome. And um, we wanted to define this team as winners. Uh, and I think this 10-win season probably defines this group as, as winners. You know, there's lots of lessons to learn about this season in terms of maybe the four or five plays that could have been, uh, that could have put us in a different place, maybe the same place we were last year. Uh, but I think there's a lot to learn uh, about life relative to what we did accomplish and some of the things that we fell a little bit short on. Uh, but I was really pleased and proud of the way our team competed today, the way they played today, the way they executed. I thought dominating the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball was the real key to it. Uh, they couldn't run it. We affected their quarterback. We ran it effectively and had time to make plays down the field passing, you know, with Greg. So, um, you know, you, you can't say enough about the way our players played. I think Michigan State's got a great team. They had a great season. They won 11 games. Um, we had a tremendous amount of respect for their team. Uh, I think the heat was probably something that was beneficial to us. Uh, it was the reason that we went no huddle uh, to try to wear their team down, and I think it did affect their defensive players. All right, we'll open it for Q&A at this time uh, for either coach or the student athlete. Coach, there were a lot of questions this week about motivation and intensity, and I know that you and the other coaches talked about the fact that you felt like you had a really good week in practice. And you just touched on it a moment ago, but I wonder if you'd tell us what you think the difference was uh, this week in preparation for this game. And do you think the sec second half of the Iron Bowl helped to motivate you guys? Uh, I, I think there were lessons learned in that game uh, that we didn't finish the game. And I think one of the things that we wanted to do um, that defines you is how you finish. And, you know, we didn't finish that game the way we wanted to finish it. And, um, certainly wanted to finish the season the right way. It was the only opportunity that we had left, you know, to define this team and uh, show that we had the heart and had the kind of competitive character to finish. And uh, I think the, the players really showed the kind of pride they have in performance by the way they played in the game today. And, um, you know, they could have sacked their bats and they didn't. And I was proud of the way that they played, proud of the way they prepared. Um, and just, you know, really pleased with the overall team effort and what was accomplished on the field today. Um, for Coach Saban, um, Courtney's up there next to you as the MVP. Just talk about the, the season he had, his performance today, and what, what you'd sort of see for Courtney down the line. Well, you know, I always tell Courtney, if he keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, he's going to play with his hand in the dirt all the time. He didn't like to hear that too much. But anyway, he did a great job today. I think pass rush is something that we improved on through the course of the year. I know he had two or three sacks in the Auburn game, and he had a couple sacks today. And uh, we, we constantly had pressure on the quarterback and hit the quarterback. But, you know, Courtney's become a much smarter player. Um, you know, he's a guy that didn't play standing up in high school and uh, has become a better pass defender, uh, makes a lot less mental errors, and is a very effective pass rusher for us. So, uh, he's been one of our outstanding players and is going to be one of the leaders of our team next year uh, in terms of what he can do defensively. Coach, uh, in the round where uh, Julio scored, just wondering, was there any inspiration from the, uh, the fourth down play, the LSU uh, similar looking play? And for Greg, did you enjoy that block you were able to throw? I thought Julio set the block up pretty well the way he dipped in and then went back out. You know, that was a pretty classy move. But, you know, the runner is always set up, supposed to set up the blocks for the blocker. So The one time I could probably get credit for making a physical play, it's because Julio set it up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't trip on myself running around the edge. But uh, I told him all day, all week in practice, if I get a chance, I'm going to try to knock somebody over. And uh, I debated briefly whether to cut him or go up top, and I figured he'd probably jump over me if I tried to cut him. So uh, I think I just got lucky. But like, once again, you know, Julio. I think Thank the answer to the you. other part of your part question, though, is, you know, as coaches, sometimes you call it copycat. But we actually had a session the other day in practice 
where we ran every play, even though Michigan State didn't, that was some kind of a different play that we had not practiced that was effective against us. And the play that LSU ran us against us was one of those plays. Because you figure the other team is going to look at what hurts you all year, and they may do some of those things. So. Coach, you got a chance to play a lot of backups. Which backups caught your eye today? Um, the ones that missed the tackle on the touchdown run. <laughs> no, it was great to get all, the, all those guys a, a, a chance to, to play, and it will certainly help their development you know, as players to have the opportunity to play. But, um, you know, I, I, I don't have a real good feel that anybody played outstanding. You know, as coaches, sometimes we're too much being the critic and only making the corrections when guys make errors rather than reinforcing the positive performance of uh, what the players did. But I was really pleased with, you know, the way A.J. managed the game and had a chance to go in there. And, um, you know, we kind of ran the ball in the fourth quarter most of the time. But And some of the defensive players up front got some great experience, and I thought they did pretty well. Courtney, uh, to your left. Um, the Michigan State players and staff credited you guys for playing extremely inspired. Was this as, as well motivated a performance as you guys have had in a while, and for Coach also? Um, yes, sir, I think so. I mean, coming into the game, Coach talked about, you know what I'm saying, being inspired and just dominating the person in front of you. So, I mean, we came out with the mindset that we want to dominate and finish the game. I thought we played really inspired in the first half of the Auburn game, as well as a half of football as we probably played all year. We just didn't finish against a really good team. Um, so I, I don't think that this team has ever not come out and played. In the games that, that we didn't do well, it was because we didn't finish. Every game that we lost, we got ahead of in the game. We got ahead in the game, and we didn't finish. And you know, that was the big lesson about getting too satisfied with winning and looking at the scoreboard and, um, you know, not trying to dominate the competition, every play in the game like it has a history and a life of its own, which is human nature, that when you get ahead, you let up. When you have a good month, you don't work as hard the next month. I mean, it's life. It's the human condition. But when you're a great competitor, you've got to challenge yourself every day to be as good as you can be every day, every play. Uh, and that's a special thing. And when you get that, you've got something special on your team. Uh, and even though I'm really proud of this team, that's probably the biggest difference between last year's team and this year's team, and something that we've matured and improved on throughout the course of the year. Coach, uh, if you could talk about the level of uh, wins that the seniors leave with 36 the most in college football. Certainly that's going to be one of their biggest legacies at the University of Alabama. Well, I'm, I'm really proud of everyone who's contributed to that, but especially this senior class, a couple of fifth year guys like Greg, who really bought into a totally different set of standards relative to you know our new staff coming in and uh, did a great job of buying in and being leaders, as well as you know, this senior class is the guys that were the first recruiting class when we came to Alabama. And they came to Alabama when Alabama wasn't all that special. And not only did they come and make a significant difference, uh, they attracted a lot of other people to come behind them that have been very good players that has contributed to the positive recruiting that we've had. Now, our staff does a wonderful job of that, but our players create a tremendous atmosphere, you know, a real together, team, trust, respect each other uh, that I think people want to be a part of. And uh, these guys set the standard for that um, in the first recruiting class that we had, as well as the fifth year guys that bought into doing things the way we wanted them done. Coach, a couple of questions. First, uh, the way the offensive line blocked Greg Jones, how did, obviously he didn't impact the game much at all. How do you feel about the job that the offensive front did with him? Well, I think the offensive line did a really good job today, and we challenged them, you know, today a little bit. To we, we knew that it was going to be important to dominate the line of scrimmage on both sides. When Michigan State, the only game they lost this year, they couldn't run the ball against Iowa. And they really couldn't run the ball against us today. All right? And that makes a huge difference 
because when they have balance, they're a very good offensive team. Um, and I think on both sides of the ball, to be able to control the line of scrimmage was probably the key in the game. And, you know, Greg Jones is a great player. All right, but these guys, this guy plays linebacker. When you play linebacker and the guys in front of you don't hold the point and get pushed, and I think that's what we really did a good job of today, is we pushed their front and distorted them so they can't fit their gaps. And it's hard for linebackers to fit gaps. So it really wasn't about Greg Jones getting blocked. It was about everybody else on their defense probably not being able to play as physical as they're they need to to be able to be effective, but I think that guy's a really good player, and I know he's a great leader of their team. And secondly, I wanted to ask about Jarek Williams. We saw him for the first time in a long time. His preparation to play after sitting out all year? Well, you know, we, we were trying not to make sports center. You know, they, they converted three or four third downs in the first drive. And Jarek had something to do with every one of them. So rather than use my technique that I used on AJ, I did not want to make, you know, Sports Center again. So we were patient, let Kirby handle it. He settled down and played better. But it was great experience for him, and it'll be good for his development. Yeah, this is for Courtney. Can you can you talk about the physicality you were, you know, you guys put on the quarterback, the big hits, even when they were able to get the the passes off? Do you feel like you affected him? over the course of the game and, and made him rush himself so? Uh, I think we affect them real good. I mean, once we had the opportunity to get a hit on them, we wanted to take it. So once it was there and we took the hits, I mean, we was put in a you know, position to make plays and that's what we did. You know, one thing about that, especially not having Mark Barron in the secondary, who's been the leader in the secondary, a very good player, uh, but he makes all the calls. And actually having two different guys playing, you know, Will Lowry playing all the time where Mark plays and then Jarek playing where Mark plays on third down. The pass rush up front was really important. And I think that that made the biggest difference in the game because once we started getting pressure and we affected the quarterback, whether the coverage was good or not, they didn't complete the ball. So uh, I think that was a real key to the game. These guys did a great job up front. We had a good plan, did a good job executing it. Coach, um, Ingram had a pretty significant uh, personal milestone today right here in the front. And I'm wondering if you could talk about what kind of uh, intangibles and tangibles do you see in him that make him a special player? Well, you know, Mark is a, about as great a competitor as you're ever going to be around. Um, you know, I remember when Mark first came, he used to try to run over every defensive player, you know, and. I used to get mad at him and say, you know, Mark, we're trying to thud off. We don't want to hurt the other guys, and we don't want them to hurt you. And he wanted to score a touchdown every time he got the ball. And that is probably his greatest asset, is the competitive spirit that he has. Uh, he's a hard worker. Um, he has a tremendous amount of pride in, in his performance relative to challenge himself to be the best he could be. And I don't think there's, I know there's not a college football player in America uh, that has had to go through what he's gone through this past year after winning the Heisman Trophy. I mean, people don't really understand the attention that it takes. You know, when I walked and we walked across the street after he won the Heisman Trophy a year ago, I said, you know, Mark, there's three things. First of all, how's this going to affect you as a person? But secondly, how are you going to handle how everybody else that you meet and that you're confronted with is going to look at you differently than what you've ever been. And the last thing is, is how are you going to impact somebody else as a leader by accomplishing this award and being the best player in college football to do something to inspire them. And, you know, probably the hardest thing Mark had to deal with this year was the second one. Because he was still little Mark to all of us, because his dad's big Mark to me, because he played for me too. Uh, or played on the team where I coached. And that's been the hardest thing for him, is to have to deal with how everybody that he meets looks at him differently than what he sees himself. Coach, when you look back on this season, including this, this game here, would you consider it a successful season? Um, I'm proud of the way the players played. Um, we're not satisfied with where we ended up. You know, we, we compete to win the SEC championship. 
Uh, first of all, we want to win our division, and we didn't. Uh, we didn't get the opportunity to play in the SEC championship game. Um, and that's our goal. So that's what we want to accomplish. But I don't know that we had realistic expectations in some regards relative to the 26 seniors that we had last year, um, replacing nine defensive starters and some pretty significant performers, um, that we knew that we were going to have a young team this year. And the thing that I was most proud of is these guys improved throughout the course of the year. And we matured a lot to get better and better and better. There were just four or five you know, plays that would have made a difference in this season relative to what this team could have accomplished. And I think the maturity will help this team in the future. I think the leadership that will come from the lessons learned this season will be beneficial to, the, to this team in the future. All right, I've got time for two more. Left. Greg, what was it like coming out of the game when you did, and then what was it like leaving the field for the last time? Well, it was kind of a surreal moment. I mean, I could I'd still just think back, you know, five years removed from high school and uh, just being here and how the impact this time and, and the time with Coach and the players have had, has had in my life has just been, it's been pretty remarkable. So I just had to reflect briefly about um, just everything we were able to do. And it's just nice to be able to appreciate the fans because, you know, I was just trying to salute them because they – they make it special to come here. That's why I came here, because I want to play for a passionate fan base. I want to make them proud. And I wanted to, um, I wanted them to be able to consider themselves proud to be Alabama fans. Uh, because I think at the time when I first got here, that pride was starting to return. And now that pride is full-fledged, and everyone feels it, and in large part due to coach. And um, it's just surreal that it's over. Um, it's disappointing. and uh, But I was just glad to be able to go out and and uh, leave my mark the best way I knew how. All right, last question over here. In the my right. opinion, oh, sorry, just to add to that, um, you know, we've had a lot of great players at the University of Alabama, and Greg has certainly been a great player for us the last two years. Um, but I would want to put him and his legacy as a University of Alabama football player as one of the greatest ambassadors that could ever represent a university. I mean, you talk about a lot of class personally, academically, his achievements and accomplishments, and uh, what he's been able to do on the field, uh, not only in his performance, but how he's affected other people, is probably got to be right up there with all the best and all the great ones. Got one for Greg. Greg as well. Um, Coach talked about Courtney's progress. Mm -hmm. When you guys go good on good, what have you seen during the course of this season in terms of his well, progress? I mean, Courtney's always been extremely physical. I can remember a story a couple of years ago. Uh, we were in fall camp, and one of our biggest, toughest guys, fullback, Baron Huber, I mean, he got a concussion because of a head-on collision with Courtney. And I mean, he's always been a playmaker. He's always been uh, an athlete. He's, and I think now, and I think this is one thing that separated Rick Londo from just everybody, it seems like, is the fact that when you play smart within this defense, it'll put you in position to make plays. and. Um, Courtney does such a good job of playing his role, whether that's rushing the pass or being effective in, in, the, in the passing game and things like that. But um, he's done a great job, and the progress is significant. And, you know, he's going to, you know, he's just going to continue to improve. And I'm just looking forward to following in and uh, seeing that development over the next six months. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Alabama breakouts you, will take uh, place. I, I just like to say that uh, the Capital One Bowl, Florida Citrus Bowl, commission, whatever it's called, um, all the people who work so hard to make this bowl game what it is, uh, we would like to thank. Um, I would like to personally thank for the University of Alabama as well as our entire team and our entire organization. Um, this may be as fine a bowl game as any bowl game in the country in terms of uh, the wholesome atmosphere, uh, the great things that you have to do here and the tremendous hospitality that uh, not only the bowl but the city of Orlando and the people here uh, create for the teams that are here, and we certainly appreciate it. Thank you.